What's up, everyone? It's the Only Up From Here podcast with Logan and Brooke. Today is episode six, and it, we have uh, two exceptional guests sitting across the table from us. They are the ones that showed me the uh, ways of the upbringings, of my upbringings. They are the ones that have supported us from day one. They are my mom and dad, or better known as Bev Federuk and Dwayne Federuk. So welcome, and... Uh, Let's kick it off with uh, the question of the day right off the start here. Question of the day. So I get I got chosen. Or I everybody when the question came up, who's gonna give the question of the day? Everybody got quiet. So <laughs> I don't like silence, so I spoke up. So here's my question of the day. It's a two part question. So the first part is how do you define ego? And in what way do you allow your ego to either enhance or to restrict your ability to be an entrepreneur? Wow, that's a good one. Oh, that's a good start. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. All right. <laughs> you know how our question of the day works. So go to um, our post for this podcast um, or on any of the platforms you're listening on and respond to that question. However, should I, should I repeat the question? Yeah, let's let's hear okay, it one more so time. <laughs> the first part of the question is, how do you define ego? And then the second part of the question is, in what way do you allow your ego to get in the way of your ability to become an entrepreneur. Now, where do we go from here? <laughs> yeah, so... Uh, That's pretty much uh, it, eh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that just got our, <laughs> yeah, that got our uh, thoughts rolling. <laughs> First off, we'd like to thank our sponsors, Up Leather Designs. Uh, we are a luxury leather brand company that uh, makes or focuses on handbags and wallets mainly. Uh, you can find us at Up Leather Designs on uh, Instagram mainly, but uh, essentially all their uh, social media platforms. And our website is upleatherdesigns.com. Let's have our guests tell us who they are and what they do first off. So it's always nice to begin in gratitude. And I think the, it's this is our first shot at a podcast, first time being on stage like this in, in this type of way. And it's kind of something that, that has been zipping around in the back of my mind for a while, but not really being exposed to it, kind of nervous to, to do it. So mm-hmm. when you put on a stage by somebody else and guide it along and, and show on the ropes, like Brooke and Logan have done here, it, uh, I just feel a lot of gratitude to have the opportunity to be part of this. So, mm-hmm. so thank you guys. Thank you. So thank that's, you. That's really neat. Neat experience uh, mm-hmm. to be part of. It's neat when you're, Watch your family and your children, the ones that you raise, kind of grow up in this world and, and become something. Uh, and to have that expectation, would, I would have never guess that we would be sitting at a table doing a podcast with these two <laughs> <laughs> in, in beautiful rainy soup, British Columbia, on a Monday afternoon mm-hmm. in the middle of a bunch of trees in a cute little cabin. So it's pretty fun. So what are we? So we run a company called Sage View Strategies. And Sageview Strategies, I could say, is a financial planning firm, but the perception that people will have is uh, that it's like a typical financial planning firm. And I think we're unique in a lot of ways, but I'll just leave it at that. We're, we, we do financial planning and uh, for individuals and uh, a lot of work in the employee benefits area, too, for group insurance and pension plan work and stuff like that. So that's what we do. Mm-hmm. It's not so much how we do it or the why we do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. So first question for you guys is, was, as you just said, you guys are, as you say, financial planning. So was that, have, were you guys always set on, on being in the industry that, and field that you're in today? Hmm. Like always meaning all 56 years. <laughs> Basically. Yeah. Like, like, or when was like the transition to make it. Um, yeah. your goal to become a financial How did advisor we get here? Firm. Yeah. Hmm. Was it a journey yeah. of trying multiple things to get to what you enjoy today's business? Or was it always in that avenue of, of financial planning? And hmm. Well, <clears throat> when... I don't think that... A financial planning business was, and this is my perspective, and you can. 
I can correct sharing. you. Sharing. <laughs> you can share your perspective, but the way I see it, like I never envisioned that we would be running um, a financial services business 30 some years ago. Mm-hmm. I did start my career in the insurance industry uh, and in an administrative capacity. And I am by no means the, um, I'll say, entrepreneur or or um, face of the business. I am. My role has always been in my career the back office part of it. So I guess that's why I never thought that I would ever be in a work um, create a company that is considered entrepreneurial. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the road to this started, the gravel path <laughs> to this started back when Dwayne made the decision to move into the insurance industry. Um, and he can share how he got or why he got to... Uh, that point in his life and then from there it's there's a path Mm. beyond that but there's that initial decision because you didn't originally um, decide you weren't originally in the insurance or entrepreneurial field or mindset and I think the, the mindset maybe always existed but didn't know know mm-hmm. that it existed mm-hmm. um, and initially it wasn't you didn't get into the this industry to to instantly start a company mm-hmm. yeah, because I think well initially I saw a lifestyle more than anything um, and I've worked in the head office but I, I got to experience the lifestyle that some of the people had in the sales office so I want I like that lifestyle compared to the lifestyle that I had up to that point. And so I worked hard at gaining some capabilities and convincing the branch manager that I should be brought into this business. And I was a 23 at the time and uh, knew very little about money other than spending it. Not that I had a lot to spend, but uh, really the financial planning aspect was, was foreign to me. I just wanted the lifestyle. So Convinced the branch manager eventually to take me on, and uh, I had some convincing words along the way that challenged my thoughts as far as there was a possibility that I might fail, and uh, kind of decided that that wasn't going to be an option for me. So I had to make it work, and over time, it kind of went from a role of being in, in on the sales side to. Middle, middle management and hiring and training and bringing new people into the business. And you know, there's a big transition in our lives when we moved to a different city and started with a different company. And then along the way, as, as I got more attuned to what I was doing, I think it just kind of evolved that I started to see that there, that there should be a better way to do what I was doing. Mm-hmm. And working for the companies that I worked for, uh, it was always a role serving serving the company and never really serving the client. And whatever words they said, they said. But there were always different sales campaigns. There was different uh, targets that you had to meet. There was people always, especially as I, I moved into management at a, at a firm in the city that we live in now, um, you know, it's... It's a membership-driven organization, but yet every Monday morning I'd sit down, or I wouldn't sit down. The, the vice president of marketing would come into my office from the financial institution and ask me what sales we had for last week, how we're meeting our targets and that kind of stuff. And I thought it was a member type of a organization, but really it was it was all about revenue-based, right. and that's all it was about. And already at that point, it was like that's yeah, I got I have enough capabilities. I know that the People want something different. The customers want to be treated different. They don't want to be treated just like a, a revenue generating steep stream for some VP to, to hit his targets. So I decided to uh, 
become an entrepreneur at that point, I guess. Is really, and so that, that was in 2003. Yeah. Where's me started in the business? We're getting a big hail storm right here. So <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's hail still hear us. Right oh, yeah. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I hear about the rain, rain in, uh, on the island here in Vancouver Island, but usually you got to come to Saskatchewan to see a big, big hail storm. Here we have to come here to see the big yeah. hail storm. <laughs> this is wild. Yeah. This is crazy. The gods are speaking. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, so back in 89, it was April Fool's Day, 1989, when I first started in the business. I remember that, thinking, what a, what a day to first get contracted. And, and then it was 2003, right around April 1st again, when we uh, when I decided to quit the financial institution that I was working in and uh, set up Federal Financial Consulting, Inc., at the being incorporated. <laughs> To be a company, I thought, and we had just bought some an acreage parcel of land and built a brand new house. And I had three little kids at home going to school, and uh, Bev was full time mom. And and uh, we bought had a table, and I bought a computer and set it up in our bedroom, and off I went. And that was the start of the business. So it's amazing. Yeah. It's cool that there was you just. Just being in it long enough, you noticed noticed a like a gap place where you avoid there, avoid yeah where you knew something could be done better in that industry and to do it kind of had to venture off on your own to do that yeah and I think that that's part of being an entrepreneur so yeah. you can be a, have a business you can run a business but there can be six businesses on the street that's that's the same that doesn't mm-hmm. make you an entrepreneur there yeah. can be six Starbucks and you open up another coffee shop and you're the seventh coffee shop on the street right Mm -hmm. and they're running a business but if you open that coffee shop up in a way that's that's unique that's not like those other businesses Mm -hmm. then then you're filling a niche in some way and really that's what we did Mm -hmm. um fill a niche in some way it sure as hell wasn't easy because people don't line up at your coffee shop window to buy coffee when you're when you're in this industry there's no no monetary thing for people to purchase right so you got to dig in your heels and we use the term pick up the shovel and start building your damn road and, yeah. and get at it. Exactly. And it took a lot of work. So you, you said that you always had like a, like a mindset, like growing up and everything that you wanted to do, like not necessarily you wanted to uh, start something of your own, but you always, you probably were like creative along the way that you kind of were like <laughs> doing a couple of different, <laughs> different things and like trying different things throughout. My uh, my sister Shelly always said that she'd get mad, eh? Because mm-hmm. she'd get mad because she was bored, and but Dwayne's never bored, and that would make her even madder. <laughs> and I never was. I always had enough going on in my mind that I was just constantly creating stuff. I didn't know that that was an entrepreneurial mindset at the, at the time. Right. I grew up on a little farm in Saskatchewan, and you know, I just work hard. And if you if you're not making a goal, but you work harder, <laughs> and then hopefully you'll make a goal of it. If that doesn't work, then you just work harder. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, for sure. and, and longer hours and tougher hours and, and the work ethic part is important but uh, so I didn't know what that was mm-hmm. for sure not at the time and well into my adult life I didn't I didn't know what that was or like but, where it would lead yeah but yeah. it was always there and then I found out that it's like I don't know exact percentage but probably only about 10% of the population even has that mindset um, if that most don't have that type of a mindset to have that degree of creativity and, mm-hmm. and the desire to improve things for others. When you were you were talking about, so you you were in your twenties, mainly in your twenties, and you were working at other places. You were gaining knowledge and experience. Um, what made the transition when or I don't know how to ask this question, but like, (laughs) what was like the aha moment and how was it like, how difficult was it when mom was at a stay at home mom and you were basically starting at ground zero Mm -hmm. that moment in time where you just jumped out the, wherever you were working and moved into, moved into your basement and started having... <laughs> Not an ideal time. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah like, yeah. is there ever an ideal time? Yeah, exactly. Definitely I was going to say, like we say, there's never a perfect time for anything. So looking back, it was foolish. 
in a lot of ways. Yeah, but, at that time when you did decide to leave that corporate world and become self-employed or mm -hmm. or um, f form your form the company i was working at a financial services oh, yes. company you were, yeah. at that point Sorry. in time and that was the link in there was a link in there that mm -hmm. um you capitalized on mm -hmm. to to um kind of to, it was a jumping board or the springboard. Was, but the decision was made before then, too. Yes, yeah. that is true. That was just an opportunity um, it's just, that, that financially. It's an opportunity that arose funding. along the way. It arose, yeah. it arose after after I moved on. Jumped. Yes. After you jumped. After jumped. <laughs> yeah, jumped out of there. There was a second springboard along the way that yeah. bounced off of. Yeah. Well, that was helpful in terms of financial yeah. um, gaining some financial stability. Mm -hmm. Because this is a very, I don't know if volatile is the right word, but it's, risky. it's a very risky business. And like Dwayne said, it's hard to show people what they're buying. Yeah. When there's uh, no physical. Stuff. When there's no physical yeah. anything. Mm -hmm. And I think some of the defining moments in uh, when people make decisions to buy is unfortunately when they're delivered a death claim check. And, and those kinds of moments, people realize that, oh, this, this is what I need. This is, but you don't see it until then because we think we're invincible yeah. and we're never yeah. going to need this kind of um, insurance or support. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. yeah, so death, death claim check is it's somebody else's life insurance, whether it's on an individual basis or through the group insurance plan, they pass away. Then there's a claim that goes in for the insurance, and we try to deliver as much of those checks personally. So the check gets sent to our mm -hmm. office, and we deliver it personally to the family. And I can tell you, I've never, of, I don't know how many claims we've had over the years, but there's been a lot. I've never had a family say, oh, gee, mom and dad had too much life insurance. But that discussion yeah. just doesn't come up. It's yeah. like it's completely the opposite. And that's where the financial planning really starts to kick in because then the family has to figure out how they're going to make ends meet without that wage earner. So right. mm -hmm. you just lost that, that machine, that ability to make money, bring it into your house. So, mm -hmm. so for to go back to Logan's question, that what was that jumping board? What was that point, that leap of faith? It was a decision you made while you were in the corporate world deciding that. It just wasn't right. Mm -hmm. This is unhappy. Something needs to yeah. be done better. Right? Yeah, and I think it was a matter of the corporate world not matching your morals and values. Yeah, you're being suffocated, sure. kind of. You felt yeah. suffocated in the, mm -hmm. where you weren't able to express what you needed to express. Yeah, and do it. Help yeah. people the way. Help people yeah. in the right way. Yeah. 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 Who, were the, who was I there to serve? Was I there to serve mm -hmm. the, the company? Mm -hmm. and the shareholders, or was there the sort of the individual that I'm working with, the one that's sitting across the table from me, mm -hmm. got the little baby bouncing on their knees. Yeah, yeah. are your values being shown to those clients? Yeah, so that was kind of how the, I guess the start was, it was just you get to a point where you're not satisfied with what you're doing. You know that it doesn't align with the way that you feel that things should be, mm -hmm. and you just do it. Yeah, so that was kind of how the I guess the start was, it was just, you get to a point where you're not satisfied with what you're doing. You know that it doesn't align with the way that you feel that things should be. Mm -hmm. And you just do a change. And I'm not, you know, if I look back over the years of, of working in other places, I could probably come up with a lot of reasons to be un, unhappy about those things. But I got a ton of gratitude because each one of those places that I was at, people that I worked with, the things that I learned, the mentorship that I received got me to the point one way or the other to that moment. And often at this time, at this, even at this stage, like over 30 years later, is it 30 years? No, over 20 years later of being independent uh, or coming on to 20 years, I guess it is. Mm -hmm. 
um, even at this stage of existence, I still often think back to how would have this person dealt with this, or, mm-hmm. or how did this happen in this way? And just the, the knowledge that I can that I've been provided by all these people over the years. So, so there's been challenges of the other places, and I don't want to make it sound like I didn't like that or that's evil or bad or in any way because mm-hmm. it's, it was very, very good. It was a launching point in so many ways to get us to where we are today. But it wasn't the right board to be standing on it. Mm-hmm. So, and I think a lot of people they don't uh, they don't reflect on their past lives or lives as being something to be grateful for. All those different experiences that we have along the way, and, and they'll nitpick and complain about this work or this person that they're doing and all the stupid little things that are going on in their life. But all those things got you to somewhere, and that's now. Exactly. So it's a present moment. Of that needs to be dealt with. Mm-hmm. You had to go through those things to get to where you are today. Yeah. And and where you are today is where you once dreamed of being six months ago or whatever. So you had to go through those growing pains or whatever it was, those lessons. Yeah. If um, I was to ask a person, are you grateful for your life? And they're going to say yes. But then they're ungrateful but. for all these different <laughs> things. Yes. Well, that's part of your life, right? Exactly. Express some gratitude towards those mm-hmm. things also because it's... It's all part of what mm-hmm. makes you you at this point. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You can reflect on those all you want in whatever way. It's a perception that you choose. We just choose otherwise. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If one of those things were different, you could be in a totally different circumstance. Absolutely. Today. Yeah. Absolutely. So. Yeah, it's all karma. Yeah. yeah. It's all karma. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you get to choose. Mm-hmm. And some of those difficult moments along the way, you know, there's... Um, any any little change, any decision to you know back out of that path could have meant such a different mm-hmm. today Hopefully. for us. Yeah. yeah, and there were moments. There were oh, times. There were moments. <laughs> there were times that it's like you, know, you got a family at home and you're got bills to pay and everything else, and you you can go a few months without getting a paycheck, right? Mm-hmm. So it's not easy. It's yeah. everybody paints the picture of it being an entrepreneur is bright and rosy. Like look at Elon Musk; he's a billionaire. Well, we don't all get to be Elon Musk for crying out loud, right? Yeah. And even us, we don't know his whole story. Yeah. Or whoever those fancy people are nowadays. Mm-hmm. So there's challenges along the way, and I've I don't know how many job interviews I was at before it was pointed out to me that by a good mentor of mine that I've worked with. Um, and so, you know, at the dark, when it's just about the darkest time of the, of, of the day or the time of your career, that's when the sun will start shining, he told me. Mm-hmm. And he was right, 100%. Mm-hmm. And it was like within days, I closed one of my biggest cases I ever worked on and then started building up some confidence and things started happening. And then it, I was off and running. And that, that was a few years, well into a few years mm-hmm. of, of being in the business. So. Um, the thing most people, so many people aren't willing to wait out that period. They give up before that, when it's in that dark, dark point. They don't wait for the, the sun point, but yeah. you've got to mm-hmm. be willing, willing to wait. How, how committed are you to? Yeah. That? How committed are you to? Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's the point when you follow through. That's yeah. the point when you know if you're committed or not. Yeah. Yeah. It's at that darkest point. <laughs> yeah. 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 And how, yeah, how you get through that point to get to. Yeah. So how do you get to that point? Mm-hmm. Determination. <laughs> um. Um, uh, I think you got to look back and see what your um, uh, the main the main thing the main points of why you went down the path that you did, mm-hmm. and make sure you're still aligning on those uh, your values of why you chose that route, and uh, the just, discipline that it took. So far, kind of. Maybe. To get to that point, yeah. yeah. And make sure that you can, and and if you're still going down, and if it's still, everything is, aligns with your value. Like, I think that's huge. If you, if you're, if you know that you're still doing what your core values are, have said when you first wrote them down for the path that you're about to choose, because that's before. And if so you're, still heading in that direction and they're, all of those things are still aligning mm-hmm. then you know the way to go and keep then going. you should be able to you should be yeah i think that's a point where you can be 
able to like let yourself be like okay this is still the right path to go Mm -hmm. so some faith in yourself too faith in that you have made the capabilities um because you got to where you are that you have the faith that you can move past this hurdle and continue And those, that faith that you can have in yourself is, even if that dark, is really challenged. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But if you have that faith, and, and, and I think for me, it's that, that core values that Logan mentioned is huge mm-hmm. because it gets back to one of the first questions that I asked, the question of the day. Mm-hmm. How do you define your ego? ego? How do you define ego, right? And your ego can get really messed up. In, a couple of different ways. So if you're at that darkest point in your life, your ego can get messed up when you pull back and turtle and hide. And that's mm-hmm. ego. You're allowing your ego to protect you so you don't want to get hurt anymore. Right. Or there's the other side of the ego where you're where you're doing so well that you blow your core values up. And you'll start, or you'll do anything because you just want want more. Right. That greed sets in. You lose sight of those yeah. of those values. Yeah, yeah. And then on the other side, again, the fear can set in, and you lose track of those values. And then you start doing whatever it takes to make this company work. And even if I got to steal from my mother, I'm going to steal. Don't matter, right? There's that mm-hmm. side of the ego. Right. So there's two sides of it, same as anything. Mm-hmm. Right? But yeah, core values. You know, yeah. If you don't have core values, you got nothing to measure against. Mm-hmm. Then what are you measuring against? Well, you're only measuring against what the sales manager wants you to sell that month. This mm-hmm. is your your new target. You did so good last month. We'll bump that up by thirty percent. You can do even better this month. Right. So he can pat his pocket, right? Mm-hmm. So yeah, core values and that commitment. And I think people have to. Uh, you gotta have balls. <laughs> Grow up her. Yeah. And have that courage. So you make that commitment and it's a commitment. Oh, I wish I could do this or I wish I could do that. And, but there's so many people that someday I'll do this and someday I'll never shows up. Like you never get there. It's a mm-hmm. aisle up there in the Pacific someplace. Some, someday. Someday, someday aisle. Yeah. Someday. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but they don't have the courage to swim to it. Exactly. Yeah, make that commitment of what you're going to do to make a change. Mm-hmm. You got to have the courage. Mm-hmm. To accept that and to work towards it, then you build some capabilities along the way. Mm-hmm. And at some point, all of a sudden, you start getting confident, and, and then you're able to take your business to a new level, and a new level, and a new level, and mm-hmm. keep different, doing different things. Yeah. Don't compare your, I think a big part of that too is don't compare your journey of getting there to someone else's. Absolutely not. Because you just get lost. Yeah. <laughs> get lost in the <laughs> yeah. chat. Every, that way. And everybody's pace. Everybody's is different. journey to get there is different. And I feel like, yeah, if like somebody will say, Oh, that person's was easy or this person's was such and such, but that's not yours. And no. everybody's journey to get there is unique. But also if it's easy, it's not worth it. <laughs> not as worth it, I don't yeah. think. You and, know, and, those, that, and that's ego again. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. You were gonna say something? No. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just leaning forward to listen a little closer. Oh. I, I think those those challenges, too, once you get through them, they just they make you want it more. They make you fight harder because you know you got through that and you can keep getting through whatever, kind of, whatever comes your way. And that's called confidence. Mm-hmm. And they're so gratifying. Yeah. When you... Gratifying and personally uplifting when you overcome a challenge to any degree Mm -hmm. whether it's just that one little step and you still have the challenge ahead of you but it's progress Mm -hmm. i think it's just so self motivating and uplifting yeah yes those little rewards eh? the -hmm. little one the little steps yeah Mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be the whole hurdle People. Yeah, you got the whole 
macro idea of what your vision is, but if you're always looking at that, it's very challenging to to yeah. keep moving forward or to even know where to go in that. Because if you're always looking at the bigger goal, you can't, you don't have, um, well, you don't have a plan <laughs> basically yeah. set. If you don't, have, you don't know where your next step yeah, is. <laughs> you, you have that bigger vision, which is great. But if you don't have a plan and set points of of little micro goals, yeah, the big plan is overwhelming. The big plan is overwhelming, and you'll get lost. Mm-hmm. You won't yes. know what to do. Totally. Yeah, so you need those those measuring sticks, right? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And when you get lost in that darkness, those measuring sticks are important. But you really have to take. There again, you, the ego can get in the way and you start driving harder, even though you're running in the dark, you know, working harder, longer hours and, and uh, forget about the rest of your life that exists because you got to make this work. This is your mm-hmm. commitment. And sometimes you just got to stop and look, physically turn around and look back and, and look at all those little milestones along the way and, mm-hmm. and the challenges that you've overcome, those little hurdles and the wins and celebrate those wins because... That's a, one of the challenges of being an entrepreneur. That there could be so many wins, but you don't even take time to acknowledge them. Yeah. Because exactly. you haven't got that big one yet. You yeah. Big yet. You're trying Long for the next one already. Yeah. 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 Taking time to celebrate the last one. Yeah. And you are yeah. the And then one. if you get there, you're like, oh, I could have. Yeah. <laughs> there was all these other wins that were pretty much just as good as this big one. So, yeah. like, what's, yeah. what's, the, what's next? Mm-hmm. And I think about on the wins, sorry, on the wins concept. Um, because you are the entrepreneur, you are, <laughs> you are the employee and you are the boss. Mm-hmm. You have to remember to pat yourself on the back. The boss isn't there to help you recognize that little win Those that wins. you just had. Mm-hmm. So you had that pause and and that's a good point pause and just reflecting on what you just because you're the one yeah you're, you're the one who has to congratulate yourself there's not someone there to be like hey yeah well exactly and you know and there's and other people might not know that tiny little win yeah right because unless they really know you and your business and where you are in it, they're also only seeing maybe a bigger picture and not all the tiny little hurdles along the way. Right. Right. So it's very lonely. I was just going to say, that's where entrepreneurial, like where you can, can be lonely for sure. Yeah. Yeah. A lonely journey. That's why another reason it takes courage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Going with that, where um, and you talked about your mentors that you had mm-hmm. when you were working mm-hmm. uh, in uh, corporate offices. Mm-hmm. Um, when you exited that and went on your own journey, uh, did you still have uh, mentors that you looked back to, and um, did you go down a hole that you couldn't like that was very difficult for you to? get out because you're diving into that what you were talking about you're you got to keep like keep it going keep pushing harder was there a point where you were like i gotta take a step back and go talk to somebody or go oh man yeah. go. <laughs> well, this could be a whole nother route of go down here, as far as men, there, there's a few mentors that are uh, that have always been there for me for sure um and Got a real nice message from one of them yesterday again, and it's just really cool to know that I'm still part of their life, mm-hmm. which is neat. But I think you find other mentors. What what I did was find other mentors when I found out that I was the wheels were falling off, mm-hmm. and uh, so there's other coaching programs, things like that, that a person mm-hmm. can get involved in. And I was I was fortunate. Uh, in fact, one of my mentors went through the same coaching program that I I ended up going through. And uh, when I was referred to it, to the, to the coaching program, it wasn't through him. So I picked up the phone right away, talked to you about this, and there was no discussion. I said, do it. 
Mm-hmm. Let's do it. So, so I did it for seven years. I was part of that coaching program right up until the COVID stuff hit. And, and by that time, it was, it was, there's, there's so much involved in it that I, I've got enough to carry, carry me along for quite some time now. And mm-hmm. So that, that's very strong on the mentorship side. And coaching, you don't need, you don't need to be in a sport to be a, oh, a God, coach. No. No. <laughs> no, in fact, it, it, in fact, it led me down the path of wanting to do coaching. Yeah. So I actually got certification in, in life coaching, mm-hmm. which turned out to be a neat complement to the financial planning business that mm-hmm. we had going on. And that's kind of letting yourself, though, have those mentors and be coached kind of goes into like checking your ego again yeah, exactly. in allowing yeah, yeah, yeah. allowing yourself to be mentored by people not just saying oh, i'm in this and i i'm i got it here. i'm gonna be the I best know. i'm gonna get to the top and but to be a successful entrepreneur and i feel like you need to check your ego and allow yourself to be mentored by other people yeah. and be coached and without being able to check that ego you're never going to be an entrepreneur because the biggest fear I think for, well, there's so many different fears, but the mm-hmm. one fear is the fear of failure. Mm-hmm. So if I'm scared to fail at this business, that's my ego getting in the way. Yep. And I'm never going to take that idea and run with it because I'm too damn scared to do it. For sure. Do you that's scared to fall in the dirt and yeah. see everybody else see you fall? Yeah, yeah. fall in a yeah. horse ship and get a mouthful of horse crap and you spit it out and you figure out which, which direction you got to go now to make this thing work or is it even worth like sometimes we pursue things too long and it's we have to fall on our face and realize oh no this one this one wasn't the best one or mm-hmm. it doesn't quite align with what we're trying to do over here and mm-hmm. it's all good mm-hmm. but you, you need to have to recognize that that you know to allow that ego to get in the way for mm-hmm. sure for sure well that was a good question i asked <laughs> 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 and then a question regarding like challenges and hurdles and I don't know if it kind of came up already, but was there one hurdle um, professionally that like one that you went through or personal that was kind of like a breakthrough moment, like a professional or personal uh, hurdle that like, I guess, held you back that like once you overcame that was like a breakthrough kind of moment? Yeah. I don't know if there was like one. Mm-hmm. Huge aha moment mm-hmm. that kind of set us ahead, leaps and bounds, mm-hmm. kind of mm-hmm. thing. Mm. Hmm. A breakthrough moment, I think, came personally though in in our relationship when we realized that the ship had to be turned around and set on a new course yeah i think because i think from that point a lot of things could have fallen apart and without and maybe they wouldn't maybe the business side would have continued um but it wouldn't be a partnership entrepreneurial ship (laughs) Is that enough ships? Yeah. <laughs> Keeping the ship aligned? Yeah. Pardon my pun. I didn't, I didn't mean for that, but so brilliant. Uh, but again, it would be a different situation that we're sitting in today uh, had that personal side of our life not been righted. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, everyone. So that is the end of... Episode number six, part one of Only Up From Here with Logan and Brooke and the end of the part one of our first ever interview podcast. So we'd love to hear some feedback from you guys on what you thought. Um, also rate the radar podcast on whatever platform you're listening on if you enjoyed it because it really helps us out. Um, but yeah, let us know some feedback. Uh, we've got a few other interview podcasts kind of lined up. So we'd love to hear what you guys enjoyed from this one, what kind of questions you'd like to hear us ask next time or what more about um, the entrepreneur story and stuff you guys would love to hear. So make sure to let us know that and uh, stay tuned because episode number six, part two of our interview with Bev and Dwayne from Sageview Strategies will be uh, launching next Tuesday. So stay tuned for the second half of that. And don't forget to uh, 
Go check us out at Up Leather Designs on all social media platforms if you haven't yet. We are primarily on Instagram, but also are on Facebook, TikTok, Twitter, LinkedIn, and yeah, pretty much whatever um, you can think of. And then our website is www.upleatherdesigns.com. And if you'd like to learn more also about what Bev and Dwayne do um, from Sageview Strategies, you can go to their website at sageviewstrategies.com and learn more about what they do as well. And yeah, otherwise contact us and we will put you in touch with them. So thanks for listening. Stay tuned for the next half. See you guys.